empty the world Make it plain and clear to me Give me the world It's a light that I might see Give me the world It's my total victory Over every situation Give me the world Give me the world We'll make it plain and clear to me Give me the world It's a light that I might see Give me the world It's my total Searching minds are satisfied Though the story's old The message still is true It's been ridiculed It's been shamed Still its power is never changed It will stand the test Hello, church. Happy Sunday. We are so glad that you're here, whether you're here in person or online. We welcome you. Uh, we're excited to see what God is going to do today. He has something good in store for you today. So come receiving and expecting him to move. Amen. If you're visiting with us, a special welcome to you. We have a gift for you at our welcome desk if you're here in person. And those gathering with us online, if you text the word GUEST to 705-805-6441, we'd love to send you that gift as well. We have a number of announcements today. Tuesday, we are joining uh, in prayer with Chumsford Church. Uh, it's going to be our last time for a, a little season, so hopefully you can join us. It's been a great time of being in God's presence um, and praying and joining in unity with a number of churches coming together at New Life Christian Center in Chumsford. It's at 10 a.m. We hope that you can join us. Thursday, we have our men's ministry at 6.30 p.m. You can see Pastor Andy or Coach Chris for details on that. And then on September the 17th, there's a men's event at 10 a.m. and then lunch following uh, for the men as well. So men, you could see Coach Chris for more details on that. September, we have started something called Revival of the Bible. Uh, we are so excited about that to see what God is going to do as we jump into a book of the Bible each month as Pastors Jeff and May lead us through. And uh, he's going to be touching on that uh, a little bit later in the service as well. September the 30th, we have a citywide youth event. This is for grades 6 to 12. If you have any youth that age, um, come see me. Uh, and we need, also need volunteers. So if you have a heart for teenagers and youth, um, we'd love to get you connected into joining us with this new ministry and to see what God is going to do in the lives of our teens. Amen. Um, and our last announcement today is a new outreach that we get to participate in that is going to revolutionize our city as Pastors Jeff and May are about to tell us. So check out this video. Well, we've got some exciting news. This is Jeff. I'm May. And we're delighted to bring to you a new ministry coming to this greater Sudbury area. You know, we're the pastors of Restoration Church. We're your host on Give Me the Word broadcast all across northern Ontario. And now we're so excited to bring CityServe yes. to northern Ontario. And CityServe is all about utilizing uh, goods that businesses and, and companies are giving to the CityServe 
serve ministry and then we're able to share them with people. And they're brand new, never used. And so what a blessing it is to the community. And it's for those people that are in need. What a way to show the love of Jesus to be able to meet needs, whether it's children or adults, household items. I mean, the variety is wonderful. And we are so blessed to be able to do this. Well, and the way this is designed to work is so wonderful for the body of Christ. Now, it's designed for the church and faith-based ministries to reach out and bring the love of Jesus to people. And so what happens is the ministry down in Southern Ontario receives pallets of goods. And then we work in conjunction with them. We've got a Christian businessman who helps get the, facility, the pallets up here at a low cost per pallet. They also, there's a well, what they call a, a processing fee that's necessary for the pallets. Yes. Um, if you're interested in being part of bringing these goods, we'd love to have your partnership with mm -hmm. us. And this is just an example of two and a half of the pallets that have come in. For instance, a brand new TV, um, a kid's kids cottage playhouse here. And then behind us here, we have comforters, we have sheets, we have kids jackets, we have sleeping bags, we have fryer ovens, we have mattress pads, we have uh, tents, we have kids clothing, cooktops, purifiers, look at all this goods we have here and it's all to reach out and help people. Now also we have things like uh, hand wipes, we, we don't know what all is going to come all the time, but eventually it's designed. Now, you'll, you'll love to hear how this is designed. So there's an app, and this app is, we're called a pod. And so what happens is we receive the merchandise, and then those that distribute the merchandise are called heroes. And you get to have an app that you'll download, and eventually, over the next, we believe, probably five to six months, you'll be able to go online and you'll see the inventory that we have so you can go, oh, I know a family that just moved in, or I know somebody in need, and they need blankets, they need this. You'll be able to see that we have it in stock, and you'll be able to get it and take it to them and bless them with it. As you're blessing them with it, if they allow you to take a picture of them, you can take a picture, it uploads to an app. And that app then shows the manufacturers and the suppliers that these goods are not being sold, they're actually being distributed to meet the needs of the people. And so I just want to encourage you to get a hold of us, find out more information, become a hero, talk to your to your church, talk to your business friends and associates, because it does take resource to get this ministry off the ground and move it forward. But just two and a half pallets of goods I'm going to say may are probably valued somewhere around $10,000. Now that's just two and a half pallets. Now we've got more pallets already here and more coming. And so this is your opportunity to show the love of Jesus to people in a real way. Now remember, this is designed for faith-based ministries. This is designed for churches, individuals that want to share the love of Jesus. And I'll tell you, what a great way to reach our community. We already know community organizations. For instance, all these mattress pads. Can you imagine the shelters when we take them to the shelters yes. and go, look, we have all these mattress pads for you. Jesus loves you. Yes. And then we do the same thing. We've got like kids paint. Imagine going to the daycares or to the schools and being able to just give them stuff and say, God loves you. That's what this is all about. So on behalf of me and myself on the City Serve team, we want to invite you to be part of the City Serve team. Be a hero in somebody's life. You can call us or get a hold of us at 705-805-6441. And it's really important to note that none of this can be sold. It's all to be given as a blessing and to show the love of Christ to many. Well, and the, the great part about that is the companies, there's an accountability process there that they actually have an algorithm that they use to check in the area to make sure that these yes. goods are actually being given away. So there's accountability, yes. there's reliability, there's yes. dependability. All these goods are fantastic. I mean, come on, we live in Northern Ontario. We got tents, we got sleeping bags, fishing, you, equipment. fishing equipment. I mean, it's just amazing <laughs> the stuff that we're going to be able to bless yes. people's lives yes. with. So we love you. God loves you and always remember this. Jesus, Jesus is, is risen. risen. Victory, Victory is assured. assured. 
Amen. So we're really excited to see what God is going to do with this new outreach. Uh, so be well, praying we got about some it. Exciting news. And this we're going to watch it again because we're, we're so, so excited. Um, we're also excited to see what God is going to do. So if you're able, stand with me. I'm going to pray and we're going to worship the Lord together today. So Father, we just thank you. We thank you for all of these opportunities that you have bestowed upon us, Lord God. May we do them with excellence. May we do them in honor of you and all glory to you. Father, we pray, Lord, for our city. We pray, Father, that you would just put your hand upon our city and those that are connected with us online and their cities as well, Lord. We pray, Father, for the harvest that is coming. We thank you for the salvations, Lord God. We just pray household salvations for everyone that has gathered with us, whether in person or online. We thank you, Lord, for more and more souls into your kingdom. Father, we thank you for this time that we get to spend in your presence. May we give you all glory and honor, God. We pray that you would just move, that you would have your way in this place, Lord God. And we just thank you for what you you are about to do, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. We're so glad to be with you today. I want to read to you out of Psalm 118, verse 14, the Passion Translation. It says, Lord, you are my true strength and my glory song. You are my champion and my savior. Swing wide, you gates of righteousness, and let me pass through. And I will enter into your presence to worship only you. So let's enter into his presence together to worship and bless his name today. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried to hide it was my turn till I met you come on let's sing this together sing you called you called my name and I ran out of that grave yeah. Out of the darkness Into your glorious day You called my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your your glorious day. Paul, sing now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. Jesus, when I met you, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day, you called my name. To your glorious day Come on, this is all of our stories Dead but brought back to life Through the power of Jesus Come on, let's sing this together I needed a rescue My sin was heavy But chains break At the weight of your glory I needed shelter, I was an orphan Now you call me a citizen of heaven When I was broken, you were my healing Now 
Your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name Amen, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship together. Lift his name high and bless him together. Yeah. Sing, I count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. And the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Come on, let's sing that again. Sing, I count on one thing. I count on one thing. The same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Your name, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh, my days, oh, yes, I will for all my days. Oh, yes, I will. I choose to praise to glorify. Glorify the name of all names And nothing can stand against I choose to praise To glorify, glorify the name of all names Nothing can stand against no. Yes, I will lift you high In the lowest valley Yes, I will Bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. joy when my heart is heavy all my days oh yes I will for all my days oh yes I will for all my days oh yes I will amen let's just declare right now as a church that Whatever valley we may find ourselves in, that we will lift high and exalt the name of Jesus always. We will bless his name and we will sing for joy. 
Amen. Let's continue to worship. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. that again you are here you are here moving in our midst I worship you oh I worship you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Sing, you are here. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, he is here. You are here. You're turning lives around, yeah. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, you are here right now. You are here. Oh, you're many in every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Oh, we say you are we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, cause you are, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, and that is who you are. 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 Yes, it is. You know, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says that we live by faith and not by sight. And amen, isn't that the truth? And because of that, we can sing that even when I don't see it, you're working. Because we live by faith and we know that our God will never let us down. He's always on time and He's always working. Come on, let's sing this together. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop, you are. We make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, oh, amen, cause you are, we make 
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, and that is who you are, oh, that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are, and that is who you are. 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 Amen. And so we say, even when we can't see it, we know, God, that you're working. Because we live by faith and not by sight. You're the God who is always on time, the all powerful, all knowing God. And we put all of our hope and our trust in who you are as our own personal way maker. We love you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for who you are. In your mighty, mighty name, I pray. Amen. Father, we just thank you right now that your Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts and in our lives, that you are the revealer of truth, that you are a God that meets us right where we're at in the present moment. And so, Lord, we just fix our attention on you right now. Lord, no matter the battles that we're facing, the victories that we've experienced, no matter what the future may hold or what we're struggling with to let go of, Lord, we just thank you that you're an ever-present help in the time of need. Lord, each and every one of us have need today. Each and every one of us have a, a hole within our heart to need to know your grace and your love. So Holy Spirit, I'm asking you today that you would just touch us with your love in a new and powerful way today. That, Lord, you would manifest yourself as the miracle worker. And Lord, if there's a, a touch of healing that's needed, let it happen. If there's provision that's needed, let it manifest. If there's restoration that's needed, begin the process right now, Lord. Father, we just thank you that it says in your word that your house will be called a house of prayer. And so, Lord, we do that right now. That you said, first and foremost, let prayers be lifted up for all men and for those that are in power. Those are that are in positions of authority. And so we do just that, Lord. We don't grumble, we don't murmur, we don't complain. We pray for those that you've raised up in governmental authority, Lord. We pray that you would raise up Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednegoes in the realms and the corridors of governmental power. Father, we pray for the church and the authority in the church. The church would once again seek your heart in a new and passionate way. That your church would return unto you in every arena, Father. Lord, that we would just shake off the world and pursue you once again with a heart of fervor, of passion. Lord, we pray for those that are in charge of economic forces the businesses, the rulers, and those in principalities, Father, all across this provinces and in the nation, Lord. We pray first for ours. And Lord, you would touch them. Lord, you said that when your people rule, that the people would be blessed. And so we pray that you would rule and reign in Canada. We pray, Father, that even as we have friends and and partners and on-air church community in other nations of the earth that we pray for their nations, Father. That you are the same Lord. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Holy Spirit, it says that we are to pray one for another, so we do that right now. Not for our own needs, God, but for the needs of my brother and my sister, for the needs of their family. Lord, that you are the healer of the broken heart. That you are the restorer and the repairer of the breach in people's lives. That you are the one who shows light in the midst of the darkness and shows a clarity of path and direction. Oh, Holy Spirit, you are the great comforter, the great counselor. 
Holy Spirit, you are the one that we work in conjunction with. And so, Father, we thank you that we're, our hearts would cooperate with you today. That our actions would be obedient to you today. Lord, we pray that we just set everything aside right now and fix our eyes upon Jesus. Look full into your wonderful face. Lord, we thank you for the radiance of your glory that it would fill this place. The Lord would say that He's removing the obstacles from before you, that the battle is His. If you would just stand fast and trust Him, if you would just extend your hand to His and take His hand. That he would lead you into the place of safety. For he is the Lord God that provides. He is the Lord God that protects. He is the one that redeemed you. Rest confidently that he has your interest in mind. Father, we thank you for this very day. That you are a good God and a merciful God and a gracious God. And you visit your people from generation to generation, oh God. Father, we love you. We thank you for this glorious nation and this time that we have today. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have a seat if you're in the house here. And I just sense the, the presence of the Lord wanting to just very clearly... Let us know that it's in the intimacy with the Lord that transformation takes place. You see, many times we, we miss the supernatural because we're looking for the spectacular. We miss the move of God because we're not looking in the right place or our ears are not attuned to what God is saying and doing in the present moment. I think it's very important that in these days we recognize that God is at work in our lives. You know, I'm so thankful for the privilege to be able to minister the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I don't count it lightly that you're here this morning or that you're online. You know, the Bible says that when the Apostle Paul, and you know, we're, we're, we've invited you to go on a journey of going through the book of Ephesians for the entire month of September and I've sent you out an audio clip those of you that have requested it an audio clip with a commentary by Oral Roberts and he addresses the book of Ephesians and talks about it being one of the greatest revelations to the church and I like the way he prefaces it he says it this way, you know, that the Corinthian church was a church that was full of giftings and power yet the Corinthian church was corrupt and immoral he deals with the Galatian church and says how the Galatian church was a church that was trapped in legalism and bondage and not able to live in the freedom that Christ had come to give them. But yet when he gets to the church in Ephesus, he didn't really have great correction to bring to them. He just was able to now take them to a new place. I say to you right now that as the body of Christ grows, as the body of Christ matures, we don't always have to fight the good fight of faith to get us to a place that God wants to take us to. You see, that's why he builds upon the foundation of the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. The book of Ephesians is, I believe, the greatest revelation that God has ever given the church because we're going to be looking at a little bit of it today that talks about our identity. And I encourage you, don't just listen to the recording one time. Don't just study the outline we'll send to you one time. You know, we've got lots of people that are going to join us on this journey all month long. Matter of fact, last week on the radio, we were addressing the fact, and, and May was, when we were talking about worry what was the song that you said we were talking about not worrying don't worry be happy the song i said let's change it to don't worry be peaceful 
So then that kind of brought a thought to my honey. You know, the uh, Words artist, have a way of doing that. They bring thoughts. <laughs> the artist, to don't worry, be happy, he thought of that person. And we were talking about the revival of the Bible and the next 10 people to call in to sign up for that, for the book of uh, Ephesians for the month of September, he said he would wear dreadlocks to church. He wouldn't wear them necessarily through the whole service, but he would put them on. So here we go. I never know what he's going to do. <laughs> okay. All right. I got my dreadlocks. Okay. Uh, there, there you go. I have kept my promise. Amen. If you're watching online, you know, I want you to know I've got my dreadlocks on. And I still invite you to go on the revival of the Bible. You know, you, you joke about it, but one time we had somebody say to us, um, if, you, if you, what was it, sing and dance in church? If you sing and dance in church, then I'll come to church. So he did. We did. And, you know, on that video, we had over 10 thousand views of that video of us singing and dancing in church so well it was to um was singing in the rain but instead it was singing, singing in, in the, the snow. snow so he had on he had a shovel and a scarf and a hat and i had a bucket of snow that i was throwing in the air and he was dancing and at the end just kind of dumped the whole snow over his head and we had so many comments about that well you know i'm gonna i'm gonna qualify this i, I certainly hope i am not offending anyone okay because we're just doing it in the spirit of fun and it just kind of is like uh you know all right uh you know we we like to tell uh, people we're the cool grandparents. <laughs> You know, we ride Harley Davidsons, you know, we have fun, we're laughing all the time, and when May said, don't worry, be happy, or don't worry, be peaceful, I just started singing, think, thinking of that song and singing it, and so then out of my mouth, I don't know, has anything ever come out of your mouth that you've regretted you said? Okay, I, I remember years ago, Brother Jerry, or was it, yeah, it was Brother Jerry and Brother Copeland, you know, he was saying, Brother Copeland was preaching and talking about being a partner of the ministry and brother jerry walked up to him and he says you know brother copeland i don't have a hundred dollars but if i had a hundred dollars i'd give you a hundred dollars well pretty soon the day walked up and brother jerry handed brother copeland a hundred dollar bill and as he handed him a hundred dollar and he says you know brother copeland the next time it's going to be a thousand dollars well, the day came down the road that he walked up. He handed Brother Copeland a, a thousand dollars, and he said, "The next time it'll be ten thousand dollars." And it went on. It was a hundred thousand dollars. And then when he got to the hundred thousand, he said, "The next time," <laughs> he said, "It'll be a million dollars." And you want to know what happened? He didn't put a million dollars in Brother Copeland's hand, but he preached a message about the memorial, about building a life of a memorial. And when the children of Israel crossed over, they took the stones and they laid the stones together and they declared it a memorial unto all of Israel to that day. He preached that message. Brother Copeland was so touched by that message that he took that message and sent it out to his entire partner base. His entire partner base responded with, I believe the final total was somewhere over $2 million for that one message. What's the point? Sometimes the Holy Spirit might just pop out and you're going to try and squash Him down, but you just need to believe God to step into it. You see, we want God to move through us, but we shut God down all the time, and then we wonder why isn't God doing bigger, greater things in our life? You know, you, you heard that ministry that we're, we're launching. Everything we do around here, we do by faith. Everything we do, we do believing, being led by the Lord, just like we believe in to touch the youth. Well, what are they starting? A citywide youth, a cooperation between multiple churches to get together once a month to minister to the youth of our city, and we're going to be part of it. You see, that's what's going on. What are we doing? You know, we're part of church prayer in another church connecting with them. What are we doing? We're part of the new City Serve ministry, which is reaching out to all different churches and inviting them to be evangelistic and to be a blessing and to the community. You know, if a church was gone tomorrow, would it be missed? I want to tell you right now, I have, I'm on a mission that I believe this church, Restoration Church, is a church that is impacting this city and northern Ontario. 
I believe that you're part of something bigger. That's why transformation happens in our lives as there's individual relationship with the Lord and our lives are transformed. And then collectively, God utilizes us because He's able to position us in such a way. And, and as we've been talking about you know, our uh, Zoe, our, our, our life in God, you know, there, there's some statistics I, I want to give you this morning. You know, let, me, let me ask you a question. Do you know what the most watched sport is in Canada? Anybody? You looking at my notes or do you know that? It's hockey. Do you know what the number two sport is in Canada? Basketball. You know what number three is? Baseball. Do you realize 77% of Canadians, over three quarters of Canadians, follow professional sports? Do you realize that the greatest... Um, Platform that they have for following professional sports in North America is still radio. More people follow professional sports on radio than watch it in TV or on person. Now, let me give you another statistic in Canada. In Canada, it says that currently, currently, 21% of Canadians go to church. 21%. That's down... 9% from 10 years ago. Now, I, I just lay a premise before you. Three quarters of us are involved in following sports, but a quarter of us are involved in connecting with the body of Christ. Can I just say, hey, there's something needs to shift here. You know, it talks about in the last days. Now, we're going to go someplace here, and I want you to listen. If you're feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit, that's good. Because you know you need to connect. We want to connect. You're amazing. You need to be told you're amazing. You need to know that as you're going through battles, you're not the only one. And you need a place that your gifts can be released. So that you can live the life that God has for you and I. But we've allowed things to get in the way. You know, popularizing sports figures is nothing new. When you, you look back across history, back in Rome and in the great... Greek culture, the sports figures were the ones that were amplified. They were the ones that were looked up to. Now, let me ask you a question. And, and I'm not downplaying any hockey player, nor baseball player or basketball player, but what makes them worth $100 million? Okay, what gives them an opinion to shape culture because they hit a stick or throw a ball? Let's be real. Okay, let, let, let's be real about this in our culture. So when we're talking about experiencing the fullness of God, we're going to be looking at being positioned for fullness. Now, I see you see that. that that's football. You know, but I, I, I want to say it this way. Maggie, the blessings of God. Okay, you know, she was in position to receive, but she didn't catch it. Okay, but she was in position. Everybody give her a hand clap. Hallelujah. All right, she was in position to receive, but she didn't catch it. You know, what are we looking at here? We want to place, be, put ourselves in a position to receive everything God has for us. And we want to learn. Here you go, sweetie. Throw it to me. I'll catch it. Ooh, thank God I caught it. Hallelujah. Okay, you know, and the reality of it is we want to put ourselves in a position to receive, but we also want to know how to receive. You see, many times we're called believers. Believers are to be receivers. We are to be receivers of the more than abundant, the eternal life, the Zoe life, the destiny life that God has for us. We're not just supposed to receive it internally. We're supposed to express it externally in our lives. You know, it's like the guy who's constantly defeated, constantly broke, constantly complaining, constantly murmuring, says to his friend or his relative who's in a very tough place in their life, Hi, Jesus will help you. Won't you won't, why don't you come to church with me? And they're going to look at your life and say, I don't see the victory here. Well, how many know they need to see the victory in our life? It's not enough just to receive it. I don't know about you, it wasn't enough for me just to meet me. 
It wasn't enough. I had to have more. Well, how about you? That's what God wants. And the reason we're looking at this position, the reason we're looking at the Zoe, the reason we're going into the place we're going is because God wants to take you someplace you've never imagined you could go. You see, to, to go into that place of the Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is the one that creates the image on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit is the one that fuels the faith through the Word of God, that empowers you. But we've got everything else blocking the images, internally and externally. You know, in the last days, we're living in difficult, perilous, and hard to live in times, but we're living in the best of times. I'm telling you, while, ever, while people are struggling, God's blessing, God's moving. Yeah, are there battles? Absolutely. Do Pastor May and I go through battles? Absolutely. We're alive and we're breathing. Okay? But I will guarantee you this, that I, I'm going to preach to you and declare to you there's nothing that faith in God won't take care of. There's nothing that if you just won't step out, and a lot of it comes to why we're trying to get you into the book of Ephesians. Because it talks about your identity. You know, why do people need to wear the little alligator? Why do they need to drive a certain car? Why do they need to have a, a certain this or a certain that? Now, I don't have any problem with any of those things. I want you to understand. Okay, I got my fossil watch on. Amen. I like fossil watches. Amen. You know, I, I drive a Honda. Okay, I, I like Hondas. I had a Harley Davidson. I, I, there's nothing wrong with names on things, but if you find your identity in it, it's because you don't know who you are. And see, the book of Ephesians tells us who we are. One of the greatest issues in society today is identity dysphoria. They don't know who they are. Am I this? Am I that? I don't know. You see, people are confused because they won't come to the Lord and submit ourselves unto God and learn who they really are. Well, we have a responsibility as pastors, May, and as teachers and as uh, ministers in the body of Christ to bring you into a place of putting you into position to receive, okay, and teaching you who you are. You're absolutely amazing. You're created in awesome wonder, God says. Imagine this. You know, God created. In the beginning, God. The Hebrew actually says it this way. God in the beginning. I like that because God's first. He spoke everything into being. The universe that they're now discovering through the whatever... Hubble and double and whatever the the big things that micro not microscopes but telescopes that they're using now that are seeing everything they're still seeing a universe that is ever expanding because God's created it when He said let there be light it's still being created that's God and see God created that then God went about setting order into our universe with the moon and the sun and the stars and then God did something God created earth in the way that he created and designed it and, and separated the waters and called the dry land to be and God knew just how far to keep it away from the sun so that it would give the, the best place for you and I and then God created all the animals all the creation and he said oh this is good and then God got to this God created Jeff Okay, well, you know, I'm kind of in the lineage of Adam, so, you know, I'm just going to say God... You see, you got to have that kind of attitude. God created this for me, all right? Well, God created it for Adam, man. He created it for his man and his woman. So God created all this, set everything in place, the wonders of the universe for you and me. Isn't that amazing when you think about it? And boy, Adam knew who he was when he opened his eyes. He saw God. I say to you today, your eyes are going to get opened up a little bit. You're going to see God in a new way. 
And he walked with God and he talked with God. And as he obeyed God, there was sufficiency and supply. Everything he needed was there. And then he disobeyed. And after he disobeyed, God still had a plan to redeem his man to himself, to recapture the identity he once had. You see, part of our problem is we don't realize how really awesome we are. I did not come from an amoeba. My relatives are not monkeys. Okay? I mean, the reality of it is God created us in the awesome, wonderful image created He them, male and female, so that we together would show the greatness of our God because no man can't do it. You know, I often say it this way, that I do stupid things when my wife's not with me because I need my wife, okay? Because she balances me, you know? And I mean, the reality, she, she keep, and nor can she do it by herself. She needs me because together, that's why God created male and female. Because He created man a certain way, He created woman a certain way. And when we find out who we are as men and women of God, we're no longer disoriented. When we find out who God's made us to be in our true identity, then our lives begin to shape and, and be changed. So this identity thing is crucial. It really is. So I have a question. Do you know your God-given identity? That's a good question to reflect upon. And in the natural, you hear on the news that there's identity theft. And people have to be cautious of that and take certain precautions. Well, there's also identity, identity theft through the enemy. Because he comes to, to lie, to kill, to destroy. And it's your identity he's after. So what he does is, first most, he puts lies into your head. And that's what he tries to plant, to divert you from knowing how God sees you and who God says you are. He'll say things like, you're not good enough, you're not you're qualified. Not yeah, he you're whispers, not you're not qualified. Uh, you'll never be accepted. You you're can't change. That's just the way you are. He said, you're too short. <laughs> Whatever it is. Now, my question is, what lies are you allowing to believe that steal your identity in Christ. What are they? So it's important to know what God says about you to know that the enemy is trying to take your God-given identity. Why is that important? Because it influences what you believe in yourself. It influences your life and everything that you do. Because what you believe you are, you are. And so that's something we have to be cautious about, we have to be aware about, and then we have to learn, okay, well, once I'm aware of that, how do I know what to do to make sure that I am reflecting and believing what God said and how God created me to be? You know, let me give you just a, a light illustration here, and many of us are familiar with the children's stories and things like that, and just... We, we've often heard the one about the, the prince who became a pauper, okay, and the pauper a prince. And how many know though, that's difficult? Because a prince th doesn't know how to act like a pauper, nor does a pauper know how to act like a prince. Because their identities, you see, what is your identity of you? Do you really have the identity? All the preaching about victory, all the preaching about overcoming, all the preaching about destiny and life and purpose means nothing if we don't know who we are. And if we don't believe our identity. Because our identity comes from knowing that we're loved by God. Our identity comes from knowing that if God loved me and purchased me back, it says in Scripture that He did it before I was made righteous. Now that I'm righteous, how much more will He do? Think about it. You see, this identity is the whole thing for the month of September if you'll join us for Revival of the Bible. And you can listen to it multiple times. Not just once. Not, oh, check it off. Don't let, check it off your lips. No, this is transformational time and identity. Very, very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. So we want you to think like you really are. Are you beautiful? Come on. 
Are, are you prosperous? Are you healthy? Are you whole? Are you walking towards your destiny? Are you achieving in your life? You've got to start seeing yourself doing those things, and it'll be easier as you identify with who you are in Christ because He's caused you to be an overcomer. He's caused you to rule and reign, and He says through Christ you can triumph in everything. Knowing your God-given identity, it gives you confidence, it gives you awareness, and self-esteem. So knowing who you are, but whose you are, is the important thing. Mm. For example, Say if that you, again, May. That's good. Knowing who you are, but whose you are, that's the important part. And so what would change if you knew that you were fearfully and wonderfully made? We can find that in Psalm 139, verse 14. How would that change the way that you view yourself? If you knew that your body was a temple, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, maybe that would influence how you treat your body. What if you were aware that you were royalty, 1 Peter mm. 2, 9? Would you then start boldly reigning with God as his daughter or son? What would happen and what would you do if you knew that your identity was based on how God views you? Not the world, not people around you, maybe some of those lies you have embedded in your brain that need to be released and that needs healing. But when you know whose you are and who you are, that's a really powerful combination. Well, you know, when you, when you say it like that, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm looking for the record right now in, in Kings, okay? Um, and it was about Elijah, okay? And there was no rain in the land, okay? And, and it says that when Elijah went before the king, see, May said, you said confidence, awareness, and what? Self-esteem. Self-esteem. Confidence, awareness, and self-esteem. When Elijah, who was a Tishbite, it's interesting that God would call him a Tishbite. I don't know what a Tishbite looked like, but it identified him as something. You know, one of the things, he was a, can I say it this way? He was a northerner. Okay? He, he, he was a man that had the, the certain characteristics, but he went before the king. Now, you gotta remember, this is the most powerful man in the land. And there'd been no rain for years. Or there, no, he's getting ready to prophesy no rain, excuse me. And, it, and as he walks in before the king, he says, The Lord God, whose I am and whom I serve, I say to you, there's not going to be rain until I say so. Wow. Whose I am and whom I serve, I have confidence, I have awareness that, hey, I'm speaking the word of the Lord that until I say so, it ain't going to rain. Whoa. I mean, what would happen if we as Christians began to be aware of some things? We began to know whose we are. And we began to speak for Him. It would change some things. Not my words be fulfilled, but your words be fulfilled, O oh God. When I got to the point in my life, and this is a word for somebody today. When I got to the point in my life, when I went through a devastating personal life, when I got to that point and I said, Lord, bring restoration into my life the way you want to do it. Whew. Voila. <laughs> restoration the way He wanted to do it. Not the way I wanted to do it. Not downplaying or disturbing or speaking against my past, but to speak about the glorious present and the great future that God has. Because when God restores it, it's better. It's improved. It's multiplied. When God does it, it's increased no matter what. That's our God, a God of restoration. So that's a word for somebody today. You need restoration in your life and you're wanting it your way. Your way ain't going to work. Your way is going to be a struggle. Your way is going to be a battle. Your way is going to be pressure. Your way is going to be wrought with the flesh. Your way is going to be wrought with frustration. But God's way will be a, a path of peace and you'll see the fruit of what God wants to do. So whoever that's for, whether you're in the house or you're online, you know, 
multiplied times today we've now stepped into some realms of the spirit you heard me praying in other tongues and then give an interpretation of it that's an activation of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit you have now just heard me give a prophetic utterance straight from the throne room of God whether it's for you in the house or you online and whoever receives that and believes it and acts upon it it tells us in the book of numbers that when you do act what on what the man of God says that you'll be established that's what it says you will prosper that's what the word of the Lord says and so if, if you're needing answers you just got some answers your answer is in your identity your answer is in receive the word of the Lord your answer is you may be in position to receive but you haven't yet learned how. I remember when Brother Jerry, you know, the first church, one of the first churches he ever started, and he said God brought him all the millionaires, but they'd lost everything when they got to church. And the Lord, <laughs> Brother Jerry was complaining. He said, Lord, he said, you know, you sent me all these people that were rich at one time, and now they're broke. Why'd you do that? He said, so you can teach them how to get it back and use it for me. I like that. So if, you, if you've been through a broken financial life, come hook up, come connect. We'll teach you how to get it back. So you can use it for His glory. Because that's what God wants to do. And you'll under, understand your identity. Uh, knowing your God-given identity, it gives you validation. And it also increases your faith. So when you know that God validates you, you don't have to worry about your performance. Amen. You know that whatever you need to do, you're equipped through him to do what he's calling you to do. 2 Corinthians 5.20. And you have faith that he works through you. Gone are the days of what other people think about you or what you think about yourself because Amen. your faith and your hope are no longer about yourself or about others, but it is in God. You know, the greatest faith is the faith that is used to sustain others. That's the faith that amazes Jesus. The centurion, you know, who believed his word so that his servant could be healed. Wow. Wow. That's the faith that amazes Jesus. You know, when, when we recognize this whole place of being able to know your God-given identity gives you validation, you know, I don't, I don't need man's validation. I have God's validation. And see, when you have God's validation, you get set free from people. You know, and I learned that lesson years, years ago when I just first went into the ministry. I remember, you know, I just started our first church. You know, and I was at a, I was doing the book and tape announcements for a ministry at a, at a conference they were having. There was like 500 people under the, the 10 in Illinois. And they had these international speakers that were preaching and speaking. And one of them was preaching. I was on the front row there in a nice suit. And, you know, it was uh, 500 people there. And the guy, if I told you his name, you'd probably know who it was. He was preaching about sin. He was preaching about... Uh, you know, pornography. He was preaching about not living a holy life. And the Lord said, get on your knees. And I said, Lord, I ain't doing none of that stuff. And he said, I told you to get on my knees. Boom, I went down on my knees and I just felt every head in the house was looking at me. Oh, I just felt, you know, 500 people must be staring straight at me because the preacher's talking about all this manifestations of sin of the flesh. I ain't doing none of them. And I'm just angry. I'm mad. I'm shaking like this. And, and the Lord said, on your face. Oh, now I'm really hot in my brand new suit on my face in the grass. And I went down after there was sudden silence because the Lord said, I sit on your face and then he said, you're this close to rebellion, Jeff. Boom, down on my face I went. Grabbing the grass. I don't know, if you ever grabbed grass? I grabbed that grass. And there I, am. I, I just imagine 500 people looking at me. There's the preacher starting a church. The preacher on the platform is talking about pornography and lust and sin and all the works of the flesh. And oh, the little preacher's getting delivered down there. And I ain't doing none of that stuff. Boy, I'm grabbing that, and I'm just shaking. And finally, the Holy Spirit so, spoke to me, and He said, Son, if you don't get set free from the people, how are you ever going to set the people free? Boy, I got a deliverance that day, and it wasn't from pornography and the lust of the flesh. It was from people. Some of us just need to be delivered from people. 
You know, people will keep you in a place that you don't want to go. People will hold you back because, you know what? They want to keep you in apathy. They don't want you to get out. You know what? If you're ever going to achieve something for God, you've got to get out ahead of the crowd, and you've got to be willing to put the shield of faith before you and let it take all the fiery darts of the wicked. And you can't be concerned about what's exposed behind you because you're moving ahead. You see, I'm preaching now this morning. Hallelujah. I feel good. I feel good. Because why? I know our God-given identity. We want you to get a hold of this. We want you to be validated. People look to everybody to validate. You know, it matters to me what my wife says. Why? Because she has influence in my life. You know, but quite honestly, you know, what most other people say, unless you have an influence in my life, it really doesn't matter. It's like a duck. You know, it can rain, but it's going to go right off me. I'm not going to hear it. But now, if she says, honey, you need to take a look at that, I'm going to go, hmm. I'm going to take a look at that. Why? Her validation means something. God's validation means something to me. Whose validation is, va is valid to you? Where do you find your validation? Is it in God? Or is it in people? And I thank God for good people around me. They validate you, you know, and it increases your faith. Oh, man. This is what I know in your identity. Well, give, us, give us one more, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Knowing your God-given identity puts you in a better position to understand your purpose. Until you know who you are and whose you are, you're going to have a hard time fully understanding, first of all, why he created you and what your purpose is. Because your purpose... I mean, pardon me, your identity and your purpose, they go hand in hand, if you just visualize that. Because your identity, it's comprised of your gifts and your talents, your education, your passions, your upbringing, and more. And all of those factors, they support the role that you will have, their tools for your purpose. So no, when you know your God-given identity, it helps you to better understand how they all fit together and what role they will play in your purpose and assignment. And I have a question for you. So what mindset, mindset shift do you need to have in order to know and understand your God-given identity? God wires you the way that he wires you. Hallelujah. I'm wired with 440. I don't even know if there is such a thing as 440. Hallelujah. I know there's 220. I know there's 110. Okay, but you know what? I don't know if there's a 440. Maybe I got two 220s running into me. I don't know, but I'm wired that way. Okay, I'm wired where if I've got six plates spinning, I'm going to start three more. Okay, I'm wired that way. I'm wired to be a starter. You know, I was that way in the business world. I started things. I was, I'm wired. You're wired the way you're wired. But when you identify and know what your gifts are, what your talents are, you find out who you are. Boy, it just, it settles things. So ask yourself the question, as May said. Hopefully you've learned something today. You know, I mean, next week we're going to be blessed. We're going to have Pastor Rick Shimatero with us. It's going to be a good time. But, you know, we want to keep putting you in a position to experience Zoe life, okay? I'm, I'm feeling like Johnny Unitas today or Bart Starr. You know, you could tell what generation I grew up in, okay? You know, here you go, Nina. Where you go? Where you go? Uh -huh. Hey, Nina and Bella. Hey, there you go, Zoe life. <laughs> All right? The reality of it is not just being in a position to receive, but receiving. There's, a, there's one, I believe it's, uh, don't quote me, I could, I could be wrong, but I believe it was Archie Manning, one of the greatest potential quarterbacks in Louisiana State University history. And when he went into the pros, he got drafted into the New Orleans Saints. An incredible passer, but his receivers couldn't catch the ball. I mean, he'd throw it right to them and they'd drop it. Okay, he'd throw it right there. It'd be like grease in their hands. How many know we don't want that to be that way with us? If God's throwing us the ball, if we're diving into the end zone, we want to grab our hands on it. We want to know who we are. We want to catch a hold of this truth of being positioned for fullness. So we want to applaud you for today. And as we look at these questions, you know, give them those statements again one more time as we close okay. out this morning. So knowing your God-given identity, it gives you confidence, self-esteem, and awareness. It gives you an increased faith and validation. 
And then you know your position. Then you understand your purpose, why you were created, the gifts that you've been given, and that you would use, utilize those to glorify God. You know, here we are. We're in Labor Day weekend. It's a weekend of rest. It tells us in the book of Hebrews that the children of Israel couldn't enter into the promise of God because they continued laboring in themselves instead of laboring in faith. You know, when you're in faith, you know what that's like? I step onto the airplane, I sit down, I take my seat, I buckle my seatbelt up, I close my eyes, and I don't wonder how I'm going to get to my destination because the plane's doing all the work. That's when you know you're in faith. You're not struggling. You know, you're trusting God. You know who you are. You know what God said. You're laughing what you're laughing you're about. Yeah, you're not flapping your wings. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, and so I want to encourage you. Here it is, the first Sunday in September. Kids are getting ready to go back to school. You know, you're hearing all kinds of things on the news about the fall and all these kind of things. But let's be real. We are positioned to advance into some of the greatest things God's ever set forth. We're in a position of harvest right now. And so as we take communion today, together today, you know, we're going to seal our identity. I want you to deal with any identity crisis you're having in your life. You know, most of the failure to receive from God, whether it's salvation, healing, breakthrough, or wisdom, is because we just don't know who we are in Him. I want you to be settled the issue once and for all of whose you are. If Jesus Christ is not your Lord and Savior, today is the day to make Him your Lord and Savior. You know, we get people constantly that come to church and they've never made Jesus Lord of their life. The Bible says it's very simple. Those that call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. He will save to the uttermost. It's not about being born into a church. It's about being born again in the Spirit through Jesus Christ. See, many of us believe since we were raised in the church, we're Christian. That's not true. To be a Christian means you're a follower of Christ. To be a Christian means you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, acknowledged it. You've repented of your way of living. To be a Christian doesn't mean you go to church. To be a Christian means he's now in charge. So ask yourself the question, have I put him in charge? Am I willing to put him in charge? Do I believe he died for me? Am I willing to trust him? If you can say yes to those things, then you just simply close your eyes right now with me. You acknowledge Him as King of kings and Lord of lords. The Bible says to confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. So just say this, Jesus is Lord. It says to believe in your heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, that He paid the price for your and my sin, all of your shortcoming. He paid the price for it. If you do that, the Bible says the Holy Spirit does the miracle of all miracles. That you become born again. You get the Zoe life, the eternal life. You just get into position to receive everything that God has for you. Now your obedience in this life dictates much of the if conditional promises of God. So from this point onwards, September, the very first Sunday in September, you make a profession of faith and an unwavering commitment to obey the Lord. Just say that. Say, Lord, I'm going to obey you. Holy Spirit, help me to obey in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you reveal the identity of each and every person to them, how they're loved by God, how they're called by God. You begin to show them the gifts and the talents. You begin to heal them and deliver them. And that's what communion is all about. So we take these elements, we lift them to heaven. We take the bread which represents your body, the fruit of the vine, which represents your blood. And Lord, we take this bread and this wine, this juice, and we bless it right now unto Almighty God. And we take and break the bread as your body was broken for us. And we take eat our wholeness. Lord, we take the cup, the cup of forgiveness, the cup of identity, the cup of hope, the cup of healing. And Lord, we thank you that we drink of this cup of our identity, of our love 
being loved by you, of knowing who we are, that you validate who we are as your children, and we validate what you've done in our lives by Holy Communion. So we take and drink right now. Hopefully you've learned something today. We want to thank you for uh, being with us online or here in the house. want to encourage you, invite your friends and neighbors to come out to church. Let's see the statistics in our Restoration Church continue to climb. want to thank you for your faithful tithes and offerings. Keep in mind the first Sunday of the month, we always encourage you to sow an additional seed to help us in the ministry outreaches that we're doing. we got lots of them going on. we got Pastor Omno from Nepal. We got missions going on. We got local missions going on. We are helping people in the congregation that you know not of. Plus, if you're interested in finding more out about the City Serve Ministry, make sure you get in touch because over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be explaining how that works. And you might just be surprised how many lives you can touch. If you need prayer, we'll have somebody up here to pray for you. And always remember this Jesus, Jesus is, is risen. risen. Victory, Victory is, is assured. assured. Give me the word. Make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's a light that I might see. Give me the word. It's my total victory over every situation. Give me the word. Give me the word. We'll make it plain and clear to me. Give me the word. It's a life. That I might see Give me the word It's my total victory Over every situation Give me the word It's been tested, it's been tried Searching minds are sad